What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 3 of our Liverpool FC playthrough here in Football Manager 2018. Hopefully you guys are good. Today we are back and it's Champions League time and you may be wondering, Jack, who did you get in your Champions League group? Of course, last episode we qualified. If you missed it, as always, go check it out. And uh, well, if we look here at the groups, we got the group of death. Or certainly one of the worst groups we could have got. We've got Atletico Madrid, Juventus, ourselves, and then Legia Warsaw. Who, I, I guess for us, Legia should be a team that we're beating. But, well, realistically, Atletico Madrid and Juventus, they're never going to be easy to play. And what makes things perhaps worse for us is our game today is against Juventus away from home. So uh, a real baptism of fire, I think it would be fair to say. Since the last episode, we have played two league games. They were either side of an international break. As you can see here, we started off with a 3-1 win against Southampton. A good little result, a uh, game that got off to a flyer really for us. Firmino bagging a penalty and finishing it. We uh, dominated the game as a whole. Stats were really good for us. Also good to see Mohamed Salah grab a brace. Uh, however, the game was kind of marred, I guess, a little bit by the fact that Mario Lemina, uh, the Gabon... Uh, is it Gabonese? I don't even know what someone from Gabon's called. But either way, he got sent off in the 38th minute. It was a straight red. It was an atrocious tackle. Um, but yeah, good result for us, 3-1 win, and that saw us go top of the table going into the international break, but, well, that's where the successful start ended. We went to Huddersfield away, and we did what I'm going to call the Manchester United. We lost, and to be honest, Huddersfield were just the better team. They caught us out. I don't know if there was a degree of, uh, I guess... I, I, lack of concentration, a bit of rustiness to shake off after the international break, but whatever way you look at it, we were outplayed off the park by Huddersfield, and uh, yeah, they, I mean, there's not a lot more to it other than that. So, with that in mind, obviously not a great set of results really. I did look to make a few tactical changes. Um, so this is the system that we're now playing. Coutinho's back. You might be sat there going, what's changed? Well, I've decided to get rid of the Mazzala and instead play a centre mid on attack. A lot of teams were getting into this kind of pocket of space here and really exploiting us for it. And so I wanted to change that up by uh, instead of having a man who kind of drifts into the kind of, you know, inside forward area, which also is kind of just making the same runs Manny was making, instead looks to make a a real impact on the game in the middle and so getting rid of the Mazala making it a centre mid on attack it's hopefully going to have the same desired effect it does mean that with that change we're not actually playing too dissimilar a system uh, to the 4-2-3-1 that we also have as an option but uh, obviously Coutinho going to have to adapt a little bit the centre mid role uh, but we'll see, uh, you know, how he gets on today. I'm hoping it'll be better for us. I never really talked about the instructions on this tactic as I've kind of talked about since the start of this save. We are playing this 4-3-3. Looking out here, you know, you can see very high tempo, looking for the overlap, looking to exploit the middle and play narrow uh, and looking to close down a lot. I really want to see our inside forwards, you know, tucking quite uh, kind of narrow, really cause a threat in the centre of the pitch. And then beyond that, obviously, the complete wing-backs then provide the whip on the overlap, whereas Coutinho and, uh, as you can see here, Seri with the instruction get further forward really look to have a meaningful impact on the game from the kind of centre-attacking mid-position when we do have the ball. Anyway, in terms of general team performances, it's been pretty good. Of course, we have just wrapped up the transfer window. Following on from the Rykovic signing towards the end of last episode, uh, we've not done any more additional transfer business. There were a few players who went out on loan. Uh, those players were Dehanda and Harry Wilson. Harry Wilson, a player with perhaps a little bit of potential for us, but you can see at 20 years old, Blackpool, the, the team who are really interested in him, he's going to be a key player for them. Whether or not he is going to be good enough for us ever, I think remains to be seen. I feel like he's just a little too far off, unfortunately, for Harry. But nevertheless, a good player. We'll see how he gets on on loan at Blackpool. Uh, the big news for us was that we held on to all of our players. Obviously, I expressed concerns about the likes of Mane and Firmino being wanted. You can see that Mane is still wanted by Real Madrid and Firmino is wanted by a plethora of top European sides. Uh, however, the only player that actually had a bid on him uh, going into the end of the transfer window was Matip and he had a bid of £30 million made for him by Spurs. We rejected it. It came in right at the end of the transfer window. It was something whereby uh, maybe I would have been tempted had it not been, you know, with... The, well, 12 hours left of the window, but it just was an unnecessary risk, and he's such a good player for us. Uh, I couldn't really afford to risk losing him and not being able to get in a replacement, particularly after, obviously, with the addition of Davray. We worked so hard to kind of get one new centre-back in already, and well, when you look at the team here, Davray and Matip have really got a really kind of strong uh, relationship developing in the centre-back positions. 
So that's a little bit about what's been going on there. Uh, there's not been a whole lot going on, really, of course. It's only been two games. Um, no one's really been trying to force a move just yet. I've been trying to rotate the team as best as possible. No new injuries to speak of, which is good. Of course, it has been a little bit of a concern, the injuries. I have promoted Flanagan to the first team, uh, just because he's quite a good all-rounder player. But uh, I have now made him available, if we look here, for the under-23s. So uh, whilst he's in the first team training with us, he is regularly playing with the under-23s. And I've actually done that with a few other players. Is. The first one is Ben Woodburn, who is playing for the under-23s. Um, the reason for that being is that with Sturridge back fit, he kind of finds himself as fourth-choice striker, so it kind of makes sense to give him as much first-team football as possible. Worth noting that his determination is on the rise, of course, being tutored by Coutinho, so that's good to see that coming good. And the other player is Marco Gruwich, who I've decided to stick in the under-23s, or at least let him play under-23 games. Right now, he just doesn't quite fit in the first team, but he's the kind of player that with a few injuries, um, he would become you know, a player that we do rely on in the first team. So anyway, let's get into today's game. We are taking on Juventus. It's away from home. Um, I mean, this is going to be a challenge, isn't it? You can see here, uh, they're playing pretty well. They're currently second in the group. Of course, we've not played a game yet, so that is alphabetical order. If we look at how they're getting on in Serie A... Uh, how are they doing? I imagine they're top of the table. They usually are, yeah. You can see here, three wins, zero losses. They've got nine points, plus seven goal difference. They're pretty scary. Anyway, this is the team we're going to go with. We're going to go with Simon Mignolet in goal. Uh, he's been playing fairly well for us so far, the Belgium. Um, not, I wouldn't say necessarily, you know, completely stand out. Yet to get a clean sheet in Europe. But two clean sheets in four games in the league isn't too shabby. The back four, Moreno at left back, doing pretty well. Developed a nice little relationship with Mane, which is good to see. Then we have the likes of Tavre, Matip, and also Alexander Arnold, a player who I didn't think was going to feature too much in the first team this year. But to be honest, he's been one of the big standout performers for us. A 7.3 average rating in the league. He's kind of battled for a spot there. And uh, when it comes to a straight kind of comparison between him and Joe Gomez, simply put, he is the better kind of complete player. In my opinion, going forward, certainly, to help in that full-back area. And at 18, you know, I need to give him as much first-team football to develop. This is going to be a bit of a baptism of fire for him, perhaps. And we're in the centre-mid positions. Jordan Henderson, Seri and Coutinho. Salah and Mane play either side of Firmino, who leads the line. Going into this game, uh, I had a kind of scout report that suggested that Juventus were going to play this system you can see here. Uh, when I checked elsewhere, it said they might play free at the back. It looks like they are going with a fairly standard 4 2 3 1. Not all that conventional for Italian teams to play like this, but of course, Juventus just a cream of the crop of the Italian sides. Um, I'm going to assume that Mandzukic is going to be playing wide target man, which does have me a little bit concerned. It makes no sense for him, I imagine, not to be playing there. Um, Alexander Arnold, obviously, he's not that great in the air. So that is a little bit of a concern that we might have a problem. Ah, part of me wants to put him on fullback on defence, knowing that I don't really want him to be challenging with Mandzukic in the air. I want him to be sitting further deep and letting Mandzukic take it down and then trying to make something happen. Anyway, we'll see how we get on here. I think I actually just missed the option for a team talk, so that wasn't that intelligent of me, but hopefully it's not going to count against us. Um, yeah, we'll see how we get on today. This is the first time playing that centre mid on the attacking role rather than playing the Mazala. I feel like the Mazala is probably going to be better suited to narrower systems, to be honest. Or maybe if you had a winger instead of an inside forward. But obviously, with the way that we're playing right now with Salah and Mane, they're two players who I want cutting in on their stronger foot. So anyway, 15 minutes gone. We're not a goal down, so I guess that's something, <laughs> uh, right? I mean, this is going to be a tough game. Away from home against Juventus. I'm being very bold here playing on the front foot, trying to attack. I feel like, at least, the general rule of thumb I've always had in Football Manager is it's better to be, you know, going forward and being aggressive than trying to, you know, hold back. She can never really defend in Football Manager reliably and well. It comes good for us. Coutinho pulls it to Firmino. I have noticed here that Alexander-Arnold has picked up an injury. And with the realisation that Mandzukic is on the pitch, playing, you know, in the opposite position, basically... I am wondering about bringing in Joe Gomez because he does have 13 jumping reach and 14 heading. Um, I didn't see an indication to, as to how bad that knock is. What's his condition like? I wish you could see a little bit more info on this page. I guess technically, I say this, you can go to list here and see it. Um, 79. It's not a major injury, but I'd rather not risk it. Obviously, we've got a ready-made replacement on the bench anyway, so it's not too awful, I guess, to have to take him off here. But yeah, great start to the game so far. A good early away goal. Hopefully we can build off that. You can see here we have had slightly more chances despite having less possession. 
Um, I think I'm going to tell the players just to play a little bit more direct with the play. Perhaps not close down as much either. We don't want to be tiring ourselves out here against Juventus. They're a team who are going to look to keep hold of the ball, really probe against us. And uh, clearly, you know, in trying to harry them and pressure them into giving us the ball, it's not really worked so far in this game. So we're going to take our foot off the gas in that regard. Hopefully we can still make the most of it when we do have the ball, but it's just going to help us save our legs because our players are just a little bit tired going into this. You can see they're not quite as tired as the Juventus players, so maybe we'll have that going in our favour into the latter stages of this game. Two minutes of added time here. Lichsteiner and Chiellini on bookings. Maybe we can make the most of that. And uh, yeah, that's going to be half time. So great first half performance. 1-0 up. Statistically, it's not been the most exciting game. We saw for possession in the opposition half. And Coutinho has lost the possession more than any other player. Um, Henderson's been winning back the ball well, which is good to see. I think, uh, well, Henderson's going to be trying to deal with Dybala. So not an easy matchup for him. But so far, he's done well. Uh, apparently, we've moved well into the attacking third of the pitch from central positions. So that's a fairly good sign that the uh, you know box-to-box -box midfielder and centre mid on an attack are doing their thing correctly. I will say now, I really like the new analysis kind of feedback that Football Manager has this year. It really streamlines it down a lot, you know, just in general, being able to access stuff here. See, heat maps is always useful. Um, but just in, in generally speaking, you know, the little bits of advice there at half time are good just to pick out stuff. Um, with videos, I always play on key highlights. The reason for that being is that I don't want the videos to be too long. Um, and, well, for me, you know, and I'm sure other people who like to play on key highlights, it's just a good streamlined way of presenting you with information that's already accessible. But it really just kind of picks out the highlights for you. And, um, well, with the new post-match analysis stuff where you can kind of look at recent fixtures, it just feels like an element of the game that's been vastly improved this year. And even, you know, the tactics view where you can kind of see the grid, see how things are going, it's really good to see. Anyway, let's pause the game. They are now playing a 4-3-3. This is what I feared they might switch to, you know, something with three strikers. I, I hate playing this kind of system against this kind of system in Football Manager. And the reason I hate it is because I always feel like you struggle to mark three strikers unless you play three centre-backs. So with that in mind, I do have the option here of switching to the Danish system that I have set up. You know, it is an option here. It's completely untested, but we can make it work here. But my, my next concern basically comes down to I don't really like playing Moreno and Mane so high up the pitch. Just the way things are looking right now, it's just an unnecessary risk. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to play them as fullbacks, or, or sorry, wingbacks on support. Of course, Mane's not going to be that well suited there. Henderson can play right wing back, however, and then with a little bit of a rejig, uh, I think we're going to be able to make this work. So I've not got a great option of Trequatista. Salah is actually well suited to play in Trequatista, um, but unfortunately. Uh, well, if we if we look at it here, you can see he's just not that comfortable at the actual position itself. But attribute-wise, he's pretty solid. The other options we, of course, have to play this Trek role are Mane, who, if we look here, uh, I think he's okay at playing this. Again, he's just not you know that comfortable at the centre attacking mid position. Or we can play Firmino there, which is probably the more logical option, to be honest. Salah's not had the greatest game anyway, so I think we'll take him off. We'll bring in Wijnaldum uh, to play this kind of Regista role. Hopefully he can kind of do well for us. I don't know why the Regista has get further forward on. That should not be the case. I think we'll have him on deep line playmaker on defend. And uh, yeah, we'll go with something like this. It makes sense in this kind of system for Seri to play the Mazala. So we'll give this a go. As I said, this is kind of a little bit of an adaptation of the Danish system I've got set up. It's a little bit of a high risk kind of thing. But with them playing three strikers, it's just something that fundamentally in Football Manager, I do not like playing against. I do not like having to try and uh, contain three strikers. I just think as with two centre-backs, you are asking for trouble. I've not played that much FM18 to be able to make a judgment call on that just yet. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, it always feels like it backfires when you have two centre-backs trying to mark three narrow strikes in football manager. The AI just doesn't feel like, or at least in previous versions, it can keep up. So we'll go with these changes here. I mean, Juventus, they've had one shot on target all game. They've not had any real additional chances. They've had one there. But that's the first one whilst they've been playing with three strikers. So this seems to be working in our favour. Still struggling a little bit for uh, the, with the ball here. Uh, I'm going to switch this back to counter, I think. This is a system which uh, really relies on players to dribble with the ball and work hard. Um, but yeah, we've gone to counter. If we now concede, I'm going to curse my luck because I very rarely go kind of defensive or counter. Uh, usually I get moaned at, you know, if I bottle a game having not gone more defensive. 
So I'm kind of going against my common beliefs here. But while Juventus bringing the ball forward, they switch the play. Dybala, Jordan Henderson picks it up on a book. He needs to be a little bit careful. Mignolet, don't do anything silly. I mean, I was worried for a second. You know, football manager, goalkeepers, the beta. We've all had those weird moments happen. Uh, but, well, so far we're doing okay. We've got so many men behind the ball. Douglas Costa, I mean, surely that's not the highlight. It's not been a classic, this one, in terms of chances. But you don't want classics when you're playing Juventus. You want wins. And it looks like we are going to get one. And, uh, well, I thought for a second De Vrij might get on the ball. Lichstein could be trying to unleash a counter-attack here. Douglas Costa, this is the last chance of the game, really. Higuain bringing the ball forward. Five seconds left. Great tackle there by Moreno. The ref blows his whistle. We have just grinded out. A great little result. We have contained Juventus. They had three shots on target all game. They had a lot of the ball. Didn't do a whole lot with it. Not a classic, but it, it, it it's a win. We People had us written off. We've proven them wrong. Salah, 60% carbon plus, plus completion. Not ideal. Matip getting man of the match. Great to see there. Joe Gomez didn't have the most to do, to be honest. If Ray had another get, good game as well. Um, big shout out, I guess, to our defensive performances there. Even Henderson, 7.4 for him, of course, playing that deep line playmaker role. Uh, then played right wing back for the last half an hour. And uh, yeah, what a result that is. To beat Juventus away from home, I wasn't expecting that. Obviously, getting put in the group of death was less than ideal. As under Arnold, only out of a bruised shin, so that's not anything to worry about there. We get some money for winning. And it's all coming up Millhouse, isn't it, right now? Anyway, in terms of when we'll be back for the next episode, guys, we've got Atletico Madrid to play. I feel like that is a must kind of commentate game at home against them. It's going to be our first home game in the Champions League. If we can win that, we're in a, such a good position going into back to back games against Legia to secure kind of Champions League knockout stage football uh, with a few games to spare. That's certainly got to be the aim at this point. Hopefully I will see you guys for that one. If you have enjoyed today's episode, as always, please do leave a like on the video. It's greatly appreciated. If you're new around here, subscribe. Check out the series playlist down in the description. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.